Hi, uh, this is a presentation just to explain some uh, basic principles of animating flight. Uh, one of the things that I notice very commonly when uh, people are animating flight um, is some basic principles that don't seem to be quite understood about how flight works. Um, so let me, as an example, show you a pretty typical flight cycle that um, you might see. Um, now, some a lot of people will present something like this as um, a decent walk flat cycle, but it's it's got a lot of major weaknesses, um, and it seems pretty easy to point them out. I mean, for starters, the wing is leading the the, the curve, so you'll notice, for example, that this section here flaps down ahead of the overall flap down. Now what you really want to be doing with the flap cycle is starting at this point at the shoulders and doing this. But what's happening here is that the, t the, the tips are tilting down first and then the arm is coming down, which is kind of wrong. Um, but I'm going to go right back to basics and show some really good straightforward mathematical and physically correct ways to make flight work and it's really really easy once you understand these principles to always make a flight look very good so this is a different kind of flap cycle it's not perfect it's kind of exaggerated but it has all the principles in place now first thing I'm going to do is turn off the wings uh, actually I'm going to show you, show you the difference between the two body bodies going up and down so on the not so great up and down flap cycle you'll get this sort of constant up and down motion in fact um, a pretty common example of uh, flap cycles I see uh, there's no motion at all in the body it just does that which is uh, very weak um, but let's assume for a minute that there is a flap cycle I mean it's a good enough starting point to have a curve that just constantly goes up and down but you need to edit that curve a little bit so it should I mean it may vary depending on the weight of your your uh, bird or creature or whatever it is that's flying but essentially if you can make it spend more time at the top of the curve than the bottom so it's a little bit more like a bouncy ball um, that's a good starting point and in this particular case I've also decided to move it from instead of being in the middle to slightly to the left so that it actually goes up quicker than it comes down. So if you watch the timing of that going up, so it goes up quicker, spends a little bit of time at, at the top, and then comes down. And when it comes down, it quickly changes direction and starts going up again. The next step on that is the wings. And what I want to do here, actually, is I'm probably going to mute I'm going to mute this uh, tip of the wing so we can concentrate on just the overall flapping action. Here we go. Now the next step is to have the downward thrust. So this action, the downward thrust of the wing, the fastest point of the downward thrust should be at the point when the body is starting to change direction and I can show you that exactly what that looks like so if we look at the flap on the wing this is what the curve looks like here now the fastest part of that downward thrust is the steepest part of the curve which is about here right there and you'll notice that that lines up perfectly with let's just switch on infinity the change of direction of the downward slope so for example this is the top of top of the arc and it starts to come down and it's traveling at its fastest traveling down as it meets this point here but then it starts to change direction and go the other way so if you line up the fastest section of your downward thrust with the change of direction of the overall drop down 
you'll get your timing right. Now, I mean, you can simply put in the flap in sync with the uh, the flap, the uh, overall up and down motion if you want to initially, but then you just put it out of sync until those two things line up. This, for example, is an example of a an in sync flap. It's very common for people to just go, okay, body's down when the wings are up, and the body's up when the wings are down. And that's an okay starting point, but it doesn't actually look like flight is occurring. Essentially what you're doing is just taking all the curves and sliding them in the time liner so they go a bit out of sync, but you'll notice that it will work perfectly when the faster section of the down on the wing is where the change of direction occurs on the body, which again is right there. Okay, now the next step on that, once you've got the timing looking like it's working, it should basically at that stage already start to be working. It should feel like it's pushing down, there's a resistance, it travels up, and then it starts to fall again, then it pushes down, and there's a resistance, and it travels up. It's very much like swimming. If you are swimming and you tread water, it's exactly the same principle, and you're going to notice that you kick, you start pushing up, you're going to start dropping, then you kick, and you start pushing up. Then the next step to look at is the way that the wings work. Obviously what we don't want, going back to this older one here, is we're trying to avoid the tip of the wing leading, because it shouldn't be that the wing, sorry, let's see, it shouldn't be that the wings bend down and then the wing comes down. It should be that the wings pull down and then the tips follow. Excuse me a minute while the camera catches up. Hello. Ah. Right. So it should be more like the wings come down and then the tips follow. The wings go up and then the tips follow. That is that is a better principle. And what you're effectively trying to do is the tips are trying to stay straight, but it's simply the drag of those arms moving that is making them delay a little. Now obviously you can vary that up a little bit. So here for example, as it travels up you might take these and tilt them down more so that it drags more on the way up. And then, well, okay I'm on the wrong animation, here we go. So let's unmute those tips. Unmute, where art thou? Unmute. There we go. So on the way up, you might bend it down a lot more. Chances are you won't bend it up that much on the way down. I tend to keep it as rigid as I can because the wing is attempting not to break. It's trying to stay straight on the way down. It just bends up a little bit because it can't quite manage it. And then on the way up, it can naturally bend as much as it can get away with in order to make the resistance going up as little as possible because obviously the goal is to make resistance on the air as much as possible on the way down so you'll try to stay straight on the way down and then on the way up you have to reduce the resistance as much as possible so you will actually bend those wings down in order to come up cleanly and the end result should look a little bit like this this is quite exaggerated, there's quite a lot of upward, up and down motion and you'll find that you can vary that um, based on the weight, size um, and speed of the character that you're animating. But ultimately if you get those principles in there and you get those keys in the right place you can then just adjust it. Um, so for example we can take the up and down motion, in fact we can take all of this because it's really only three sets of curves to make this entire thing and you can scale it down. Now that the principle's in place, I can have it maybe only one third of what it did originally. And we probably have to adjust the wings a bit stronger than that. But in principle, it's still working. It still feels like it's pushing against something and that, that those wings are causing it to rise up. So essentially if you can get those the top 
top and bottom keys in the right place, you get the arcs, the arc on the up and down motion to look correct in the first place on, on the overall body. Then build the wings so that they, they come down at their fastest at the point that the body is changing direction. And then make sure that the tip of the wings is dragging rather than leading on the wing. And that should get you most of the principles required to get a good flap cycle working. Beyond that, you can just adjust it. You can change the speed and the timing and the distance, depending on the character. And that's it. I hope that's helpful.